what is happening in total internal reflection? Let us say this is again our uh, p n junction, uh, this is the junction region, this is the normal to the interface. You have emission let us say happening from here and what we talked about was only the case where emission is happening normal to the interface. Then the only loss is your frontal reflection loss, but emission can happen in all directions. So, let us think of an emission where it is at an angle theta with respect to the normal to the interface. Then this angle of incidence is let us say theta, it is the same as theta i. Let us call. So, let us say this is theta i and you have a change in medium n to 1 and we know that n is greater than 1, I already told you it is like 3.5. So, whenever you have light travelling from a denser medium to a rarer medium, when the angle of incidence theta i is greater than what is called as a critical angle, which is defined as sin inverse n 2 by n 1, where n 2 is this medium and n 1 is the first medium in which case in, in our case it is sin inverse 1 over n. Whenever your angle of incidence is greater than critical angle, you will have total internal reflection. And total internal reflection here would mean that the light that is emitted is completely reflected back into the system. So, it is not available completely for, it is not available for at the output of your device. Okay. So, it simply means that if I take a point emi emitter here, it may emit in all possible directions, but what is available outside is only that fraction which is falling such that my theta i is less than theta c. Okay. Theta i is greater than th theta c would imply total internal reflection. And when there is total internal reflection, there is no output. So, available output is only the fraction of light, fraction of emission within a cone of angle or uh, semi vertex angle when i say cone of angle i actually mean that you could you could you could actually get something within this theta i same way in this direction also you get within this theta i so half angle cone of half angle theta i is which corresponds to theta i is such that it's less than theta c is what is available for you okay theta c now, how do you find that fraction? You want to find out that fraction of emissions, fraction of uh, you can think of it as number of photons, number of rays, whatever. So, you have a point source, it is emitting in all directions. Now, you want to find out what fraction of all directions is the direction of a cone. How does one find that? That tells me the uh, a quantum efficiency because of total internal reflection. So, if it is emitting in all directions 4 pi sphere, but it is if it is emitting only in a specific direction, what is the solid angle? It is a solid angle of a cone. Okay. So, what is so efficiency eta 2 because of total internal reflection is I can just take the ratio of solid angle of cone of half angle theta c, cone of half angle theta c to 4 pi. And how do we find the solid angle of a cone? I mean you have to integrate it 0 to theta c of you can you can work it in a spherical coordinate system. You can 
integrate 2 pi sin theta d theta from 0 to theta, 0 to theta c. So, that will come out to be twice 1 minus cos theta c, this is solid angle of cone. This comes from basic geometry divided by 4 pi, well it is not 2, it is 2 pi, 2 pi divided by 4. So, this number is actually half 1 minus cos theta c. I can put it in terms of refractive index because I know that cos theta c is square root of 1 minus sin square theta c and I know sin square theta c is 1 over n square. So, I can write this as half 1 minus square root of 1 by n square. Okay. Now, I can uh, run a Taylor expansion, take one term there and I will get this as, so this would be 1 minus minus, so this would be 1 plus and there will be a 2 by n square. Uh, so, so, let me just do this expansion 1 minus 1 minus 1 by n square raised to the power half. So, that would be 1 minus 1 by 2 n square and so my answer would be 1 by 4 n square. So, this is the fraction of light that is available because of total internal reflection. Of all the light that is emitted, only this fraction is available outside. So, can you go back and do this calculation? What is eta 2 for n is equal to 3.5, find eta 2 like how we did last time. This is just to get a feel for the order of magnitude of numbers we are talking about. 0 0.02 0, 4, which is 2 percent. Wow. So, you emitted, you, you created lot of light, lot of photons, but because of the fact that you have total internal reflection, you are getting only 2 percent of that light out. And do you get the entire 2 percent? No, because you have to count that 60, 9 percent also. So, it is whatever light you emitted, 69 percent of that, 2 percent of that, because these are independent processes, only that you are getting at the output. And there is one more source of loss, which is because of absorption. Now, where is absorption coming from? Material absorption. We said that if you have a double heterostructures, we should not have material absorption, because the band gap here is going to be larger, this band gap is going to be larger than your photon. So, what is the condition for absorption? If you want to have uh, absorption, say this is the energy of the conduction band and this is your valence band. If your incident photon h nu has to be absorbed by the system, what is the condition to be satisfied? Let us say the band gap is E g, h nu must be e, must be greater than E g, only then you will get absorption. That is how you decide whether the material is working as a source or whether the material is working as a detector, because it is the same process we said. The beginning of uh, uh, laser semiconductor uh, devices, we said that it is the same mechanism, uh, the same structure valence band, conduction band idea, interaction of photon with uh, electron hole pair is responsible for absorption, it is also responsible for emission, it is also responsible for stimulated emission. But how do you decide which of these processes are happening? So, obviously, if your HNU is greater than the energy of the incoming photon is greater than the band gap, you will generate this, this photon gets absorbed and it is essentially saying that you are generating more and more electron hole pairs. And that is less likely to happen here because the photon that you generated has an energy h nu, it is crossing a n type material or a p type material and we said that if you have a double heterostructure, we had band gap of the p type, band gap of the uh, active region, the band gap of the n type and we said the band gap of the n type or the p type is greater. So, if I have h nu uh, emitted, there is less chance that uh, the probability of absorption is almost close to 0. Then why are we talking about absorption? So, by design the absorption is made to be as minimum as possible, 
but there could be defect states because of the impurities, the way you process the group. So, the contribution of uh, absorption to the loss of the entire system is actually very low provided your processing is correct. But if your processing is not very good, then you could have impurity states and you could have transitions to the impurity states. So, because of that, let us say the absorption coefficient is alpha and if this length is L, then you will have a fraction that comes out is e power minus alpha L. But as I said, this contribution is going to be small when compared to the other two contributions. 98 percent loss, you get only 2 percent out. So, the total external quantum efficiency has now three contributions eta 1, eta 2 and eta 3 and they are independent processes. So, every photon can experience either of that or all of that. So, when you take efficiency you will have to just multiply all three. This one is because of Fresnel reflection and we derived that this is 4 n divided by 1 plus n the whole square. Now, can you tell me why I said that normal incidence is okay, considering normal incidence is okay for this? Because a second source of loss is because of total internal reflection and because of that it is 1 by 4 n square and if you calculate what is the angle of incidence? If I calculate theta c sin inverse 1 by n, you tell me what that angle is? To see whether normal incidence approximation is okay, degrees, 16.6 degrees. So, out of the entire uh, solid angle 4 pi or out of the entire 360 degree, you are getting light only from the 16 degree. And so, we are still okay with approximating, this may not be an exact number, but we are still okay with approximating 60 degree as, 16 degree as close to normal incidence. Okay. One thing uh, which you may think is also that, uh, this is again with reference to total internal reflection. The photons that are emitted after total internal reflection, so when the angle of incidence becomes greater than the critical angle, it is not that the photons are lost they are still available inside the system. So, there could be some reflections and after some reflection it may hit at an angle which is less than the critical angle and you may get some light out. So, this 2 percent is only uh, the, the largest efficiency, it, you cannot say it is the largest efficiency. You could possibly retrieve these photons after multiple reflections, maybe the photons get reflected from this side and then you it is going and hitting at some other angle depends on how the structure is, but it is fair enough to assume 2, 2 percent and so it is also fair enough to assume 16 degree because you know it is you are going close to normal incidence and this eta 3 is e power minus alpha l. These are all again thumb rules this alpha e power minus alpha l again is found to be much much smaller than that loss is found to be much smaller than the other two losses. So, usually you consider only an eta 1 and eta 2. So, the external quantum efficiency eta external is the product of 4 n divided by 1 plus n the whole square times 1 by 4 n square. So, you write the LED efficiency is typically 1 by n into n plus 1. Okay. So, the question is absorption is e power minus alpha l. So, if you write in terms of efficiency, what is available is of course, not e power minus alpha l, it should be 1 minus e power minus alpha l. You are right. I mean how the fraction of light that is absorbed is e power minus alpha. So, that if this number is very small, you are getting something close to 1. Total power that is available in the system is, we had written an expression for uh, power in terms of some coefficients times the current. What were those coefficients? So, you are going to get that back h nu eta internal i divided by q. Now, this is power optical power that is generated, but power that is available at the output is h nu by q 
eta internal now you have to multiply it with eta external times i. So, you define what is called as a responsivity of the system, responsivity of a transducer, you are now looking at it as a transducer. To this transducer you are giving a certain current and you are getting p optical out. So, responsivity is defined as output divided by input, output is an optical power. So, it is in typically in measured in milliwatt and input is in current typical numbers for is LED is in milliamp. So, your unit for responsivity is watt per ampere. So, how do you run an experiment to find the responsivity? One way of doing it is if you know all this values you can plug in and find the responsivity, but typically you do not know these numbers accurately. So, if, I, if you get a piece of LED you measure the responsivity by plotting the power versus current and finding the slope of this, the slope will give you the responsivity. You can use this information to deduce any of these information if you wish. The other efficiency people talk about is wall plug efficiency. What would be wall plug efficiency? I connect the LED, I am drawing a certain electrical power and what is the corresponding optical power that I get? The difference between, what is the difference between wall plug efficiency and responsivity? So, this is electrical power, sorry, this should be optical power output divided by electrical power input. This is also power output divided by current input. So, the difference is this is in terms of current whereas this is in terms of electrical power. So, this responsivity has a unit of watt per ampere. This is like an efficiency it does not have a unit because optical power will also be in milliwatt or watts electrical power. So, optical power is P optical divided by electrical input power is you have a certain you will be driving with a certain current and the voltage across the LED when it is forward biased you will have a specific voltage. So, I into voltage. So, this is the current and this is the voltage drop across the LED across the PN junction and current is the current that is it is drawing. So, that completes most of the characteristics of LED. Uh, one last characteristic that remains is can you remember modulation as far as communication is concerned one important characteristic is modulation. 